You have probably noticed a change recently. Gemini is becoming the default for millions of people. The market certainly noticed it. Google stock surged, pushing co-founder Larry Page to become the second wealthiest man on earth. But if you have been watching closely, for the last two years, AI leadership has cycled between four giants. One releases a new model, takes the crown for a few months, and then the next one overtakes them. So is this just Google's turn in the spotlight before OpenAI answers back? When you look past the obvious, you notice they are aligning the pieces for something different. OpenAI, Claude, and the others are not actually Google's competitors. In fact, Google is not even in the chatbot competition. In this video, I want to show you the grand strategy Google has been playing all along. And we will see if they are about to become the undisputed king of the AI race, simply as a byproduct of the empire they have already built. Because competitors like OpenAI and Microsoft are forced to purchase their graphics units from NVIDIA, they are subject to significant supply constraints and high profit margins that directly impact their own operational costs. Google, however, has spent years developing its own silicon known as tensor processing units. And this vertical integration allows them to deploy their new ironwood chips, which are specifically optimized to run their models far more efficiently than general purpose hardware. Recently, Anthropic signed an agreement to spend more than $20 billion to secure access to Google's latest hardware. This deal allows Anthropic to access roughly 1 million of Google's custom chips to train their own future models, which means they do not have to build their own hardware infrastructure from scratch. This creates a very interesting situation because the companies that are supposed to be Google's direct competitors are actually becoming their largest customers. It means that even if Anthropic continues to grow and takes market share away from others, they are still paying a significant amount of money back to Google, turning a rival into a reliable source of income. Now the question is, can they dominate the distribution network as well and ultimately win the war for consumer attention? If you look at a company like OpenAI, they have done an incredible job building a brand, but they still rely on users making a conscious decision to visit a website or download a specific application to use their product. Google, on the other hand, does not have this friction because they already control the operating system on nearly 4 billion Android devices around the world. This means they do not have to convince you to download a new tool because they can simply integrate their intelligence directly into the search bar, the map, or the email client that you are already using every day. This massive distribution network feeds directly into a data flywheel, which might be their most durable long-term defense. While most competitors are training their artificial intelligence on static datasets that represent the internet as it existed in the past, Google has a constant stream of real-time information flowing from search, YouTube, and maps. This allows their models to understand the world as it exists right now, rather than how it looked six months ago or a year ago. And that creates a gap in quality that is very difficult for any outside company to close. However, even with all these structural advantages, there are some significant challenges that could prevent them from maintaining this dominance. The Department of Justice citing a recent antitrust case is pushing for rules that would force Google to share its search data with rivals, which means handing over the library of information they have spent decades organizing to very companies trying to beat them. There is also a big internal problem because the new technology they are building threatens to eat into the main way they make money. Google generates almost all of its profits when users search for something and click on a link. But if an artificial intelligence just gives you the answer directly, there is no reason for you to click on an advertisement and the company loses that revenue. We are reaching a stage where the difference between these models is becoming negligible. When the technology is equally capable across the board, the deciding factor simply becomes convenience. Because Google is already integrated into the devices we use every day, they do not need to have the superior model to win.